Good afternoon, everybody. We are here for the Black Flag panel here at GaryCon Live, uh, streaming to you from the beautiful Timber Ridge Lodge. Welcome, Celeste and Wolfgang. If you could please uh, hey. introduce yourselves. Sure. I'm Wolfgang Bauer. I'm the founder at Cobalt Press. I've been I've been down in the cobalt mines for going on 17 years with this company, and uh, and I'm excited to be here. I wish I could be at Gary Kong personally. <laughs> Certainly, me too. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Celeste Conowich. I'm the senior game designer uh, at Cobalt Press and the uh, lead designer on Project Black Flag, uh, which we are going to be chatting about today. But I've been a lifetime uh, lover of RPGs and writing and designing uh, for almost... Uh, 10 years now so really excited to be here wonderful and for the folks at home hello i am mandy or the mandy as you might know me on the internet and i will be moderating this panel today uh, so let's get started let's hop right into it uh, sure. tell us the reason for starting project black flag and how it's going so far oh well, i can tell you the reason uh the reason was the gossip and rumor mill and self-defense um back at gen con last year in 22 there was this crazy wild speculative rumor that the ogl would not be uh brought forward to one D and uh that we would perhaps need to change the business adjust things at cobalt press to a lot for that and i said fine let's let's make a plan let's talk about it i said celeste start a skunk works project what would we do if that crazy rumor were in fact true and at the time, I thought this will never happen, but it's better to be safe. And then, bum, 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 um, <laughs> it sure did happen. Uh, so luckily, we've been looking forward. Uh, basically, Cobalt Press is, uh, is an ever-growing company and presence in the TTRPG community. And we thought it was high time that we went ahead and made our own foundation uh, of, yeah. of a game we love that we can you know, build on uh, and secure our future. And then also those involved in our community as well. And how's it how's it going? Very exciting. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Part two. How's it going? Oh my goodness! A million going? miles an hour. A million miles an hour. This has been the most exciting and scary and fun year so far, and it's only March, uh, which is so that that's probably a big picture about how it's going on the splatter. Uh, right? Like the first playtest <laughs> materials have gone out to the public, and we're getting feedback. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's. The rubber has started to meet the road, but it's early days yet, right? Yes, um, absolutely. And uh, the, the playtest material has been really great to review and look into. So folks at home, if you have not seen those yet, definitely check it out on the Cobalt Press website. Um, so moving on, uh, what is core fantasy role play and why is it important? Well uh let's be clear here project black flag is a code name right that we just kind of put together when we didn't know what we were calling anything and core fantasy role play is the part of this project black flag that is meant to be uh open game material right so it is taking the core rules um for fifth edition D D and keeping them alive and well going into the future giving them a tune-up and putting it out there for anybody to work with um, so Core Fantasy Roleplay is the title we put on that to say, what are we doing here? What are we sharing with the community? What What is it? Well, we're taking all the basic premises of high fantasy, uh, all the goodness of fifth edition in the Creative Commons SRD, and uh, putting that out there uh, in a complete package uh, in print um, and online. Yeah, I've been... Uh, for the distinction, I've been finding it really helpful for for people to think of core fantasy role playing as kind of the engine, right? Yes. The engine that is powering what we are building. So right. uh, this is a familiar concept in more like indie RPGs, where you know, so like Powered by the Apocalypse, for example, is the engine that runs a bunch of different games. So core fantasy role playing is the engine uh, that we've been building and creating to to share. Wonderful, and that's going to be published late twenty twenty three, correct? Oh, parts of it are already out there in the playtest packs. We just right. don't know which parts we're keeping and which parts will change in response to uh, playtest. Uh, but gotcha. yes, that that is coming out um, over time in chunks. 
uh, under the uh, under the ORC license. Um, under the ORC license. Is... And uh, what can you tell us about the two book set coming to Kickstarter this May? <laughs> Not much at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's sort of split. Celeste is in charge of one book and I'm in charge of the other, more or less. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and one is a book for players and one is a book full of monsters. So, you know, I I'm the publicly confessed monster holic. So guess which book I'm working on. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, how many Tome of Peace have you led, Wolfgang? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, a lot. And, and I still love it, right? Like revisiting old friends like this and bringing new things to uh, what we're calling the Monster Vault uh, is, <laughs> it's always exciting to go back to basics and then say, but what are we missing? What else could we shove in here? How much room do we really have? Um, and, and taking a fresh look at monsters and how to um, how to make them even better and how to get them, you know, rich, vibrant, and ready to rock your Friday night. I mean, that's, that's what <laughs> I want from the Monster Vault. But the Player's Guide is even more complicated. I don't know. Yeah, um, I would say the, the Player's Guide is probably the, the very challenging piece because Cobalt Press has a very long history of making awesome monsters. And I know if there's one thing in the world that we nail every time, it's our monsters. So Monster Vault is moving along, going great. We have a big challenge in front of us with the Player's Guide, which is the, the other side of this process. So we really are looking at the goals in terms of what do we want uh, from 5e that hasn't necessarily been expressed so far in the iteration of the game. So we are looking forward uh, at, with familiar but new twists on things, including like, re like really like streamlining presentation of information, making it yes. a, a friendlier book for players to approach and players, including the game master, were actually seeding through a lot more useful things uh, that, that any player can really pick up this book and right from the get-go understand what's going on. Whereas I feel like our, in, in the past, it's it's still been a little muddled. It's, it's, it's getting easier all the time, but we want to make it even easier to onboard new players and to speak to those, those players who have seen everything, right, in 5e and are ready for some of those fixes, some of those upgrades, uh, a little bit fresh, a little bit new, a little cobalt spin on everything yes. we're doing here. So really, really exciting work, uh, hard work, but we're we're diving right in uh, to everything. That's wonderful to hear. And it sounds like you're trying to really streamline the process as much as humanly possible to make it easy for anybody to pick up. Yeah, and this is this is something we're seeing, and hopefully folks are are sensing as well through our playtest yeah. packets. But using clearer language, it's a little bit more conversational. Using yeah. things like player wisdom sidebars or behind the curtain sidebars, things that just really make a more candid conversation between the rules and the book and the players who are going to be using it. Uh, so really, yeah, punching it up, streamlining it, making it making it easy for folks to use. Wonderful. And just as a little sidebar for the folks who are in chat right now, we are taking questions from chat. And so if you have any questions for these two creative juggernauts here over at Cobalt Press, um, please put those in the chat and I will be keeping track of those and we'll be asking those at the end of this segment. So don't be shy, put your questions in chat. Love questions. <laughs> All righty. And, um, uh, my understanding as well is before the Kickstarter, uh, new branding is going to get revealed. Is that correct? Can you it tell us correct. anything about that or is it tip top secret? I have to let Wolfgang answer this because I'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> how much is secret. I, I can answer it by saying I can't answer it. Yeah, uh, that's uh, fair. <laughs> rats. <laughs> we're, we're looking to announce, yeah, soon, April. Soon, soon uh, yeah, That's all I can say. Uh, that's fair enough. Uh, I want to I want to spill all the beans, but it is not yet time. <laughs> it's not ripe. Well, I guess we'll just have to be a little bit more patient then until until April with the big reveal comes out. Yes. Uh, and um, for the folks at home, how, how can people get involved and where do they need to go to find out more information about all the upcoming projects at Cobalt Press? Oh my goodness, there are so many. I mean, Project Black Flag is the big one right now, but there are other things going on. Um, 
you know, the Cobalt Guide to Dungeons just released that beautiful collection with essays from, honestly, um, probably a couple of people who are at Gary Con right now, people like <laughs> Lawrence Schick and Bruce Nesmith and Zeb Cook from, you know, the first generation of RPG creators talking about dungeon design. Um, and also a bunch of new people like, oh, I don't know, Sadie Lowry and uh, Aaron Roberts is in there. Uh, Dominique Dickey. Anyway, uh, those sorts of projects are exciting and fun for me. I love the Cobalt Guide series. But in terms of getting involved with Project Black Flag, the, the big obvious place to go is the Cobalt Press website, um, where there's a Project Black Flag compilation page. And Celeste, you just put up a design diary talking about mm -hmm. uh, the new playtest material that went out last week. And we're asking for feedback. Do you want to speak to that yeah yeah so basically we've created a page on the website it's kind of like our faq hub landing page that we're directing folks to go if they want to learn basically anything about this so on that page which is cobaltpress.com slash project black flag hopefully that'll be popping up in the chat uh yeah. you can head to that page find out like our core values what we're trying to do big design goals you can download the two playtest packets uh, that have come out so far so you can get yep. your eyes on what we're working on uh, you can also find links there to the playtest forms because right now we know that this game is too important to do alone so we are running these public playtests basically asking for for community feedback on what we're doing what we're tinkering with a lot of what is going into this game especially on the player's guide side is going to be determined by what people need and what people are interested in seeing from us so please please if this is exciting at all take a look at that play test packet uh, and get your voice heard by answering those uh answering the surveys uh right now we have uh, our survey for the second play test is out i believe the 29th is when I we're closing it closes up in about five days yeah, yeah so, so it's still time soon. yeah but not a lot but of time maybe this weekend would be a good time a good time to run run a little fun <laughs> black flag stuff with your friends uh right? in playtest packet too we we did some really exciting stuff we introduced the luck mechanic which is going to completely replace inspiration uh it's kind of a fail forward mechanic that allows players to turn dismal luck into better <laughs> luck next time uh mm -hmm. which is been a lot of fun to see uh, feedback and response. We also uh, previewed our two, the first eight levels of the two base classes, Wizard and Fighter, as well as showcasing, of course, some of those subclasses and some of our talents uh, in there as well, which is our more specific kind of branch style version of feats. Yep. Uh, so it, big stuff in that packet. Yeah, it's, it's nice. And I mean, if you want to hear about one packet three drops for instance mm -hmm. there's a an email list where we notify people in advance yeah. so you get first jump on that um we're going to be doing a public play test as well at gen con where people can come play um some new scenarios uh with the rules and uh i think there's one more hmm what's the other one i'm forgetting oh there's a discord <laughs> right. Yes. Also the How could I forget? <laughs> yeah, we have a giant, super fun Discord community where folks can. Uh, we have lots of like a hopes and dreams style forum page that yeah. folks can go and talk about what they're hoping to see in Black Flag. Uh, we also have playtest feedback channels and stuff. So a lot of really active, great conversations are happening there. So if you want to hop into our uh, Cobalt Press Discord and share your thoughts, uh, we are absolutely keeping an eye on all of those conversations and factoring that uh, into into the future of this game chair that folks you can you can possibly affect the future of the game by joining the discord server so definitely check that out i'm in there there's a lot of great stuff in there a lot of great people in there great community so definitely check it out and uh so uh in in that same vein in terms of learning more information uh there will be a live play test at gen con uh do you do you want to talk more about that process and what that looks like for folks who are attending Gen Con? I mean, we have been talking about exactly what that looks like, but it's um, it's still subject to change. So right. we have, oh gosh, last year we did uh, the Cobalt Chronicles playtest. We had just we had our own hall, um, some of the most amazing game masters running Cobalt Press games all weekend. 
And we thought it was huge and wonderful. We had people marshalling. Every table was sold out. It was great. This year, we're probably doing three times, four times as many. It's just going to be enormous. And we don't know. Those tickets are probably, I don't know where those tickets are at this point. I'd have to ask someone running the convention part of it. But right. um, we're going to run short, sweet, uh, show off the game, show off the pre-gen characters kind of scenarios. Um, uh, Celeste, do you want to give any more information on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is going to be the first chance for people to walk up to a table and, you know, our proof of concept, right? How right. easy is it to walk up to a table and play these new classes and play these new lineage and heritage options? So this is going to be that that first slice. Hopefully it's easier to walk up uh, to these tables and just start playing. So we're we're introducing a lot of principles we're putting it into action here so looking at how we're doing adventures uh for yes. this new game that's going to be really really exciting to see that that slice in particular we really want the experience of these to feel elevated from something you might just walking into a standard you know 5e game so this is going to be our chance for that so it's really exciting on the ground stuff uh and and playing at this scale is is going to be fun. It's going to be part of history uh, for Cobalt Press and for this game. So keep your eye on those tickets because I'm pretty sure they're going to sell very quickly. Um, they yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> right. Oh, and I can't wait. We have, oh, we already have beautiful art for these pre gen characters and we're building around yeah. that. And like, so it's going to be, it's fun. We have some really cool physical items that we're going to be uh, doing as well. So it's going to be, it's going to be a really good time. Oh, I'm sure everybody who is going is very much looking forward to that. I know I am. Uh, and so is there also going to be an actual play content creator packet in the mix as well? There is, and I know almost nothing about it. I hope you know more, <laughs> Celeste. Our brilliant, our That's brilliant right. marketing team is spearheading the majority of that effort. But something that has been really important to us through this process is making sure that we have partners uh, from the community involved in this. We have had a very, very active partner relationships uh, built out with with people who make digital tools for this game, uh, people who are interested in publishing with the core fantasy role-playing system. Uh, we, we really are making a huge effort to make this feel like something that lots of people can get involved in and, and approach. So there's some really exciting stuff and that extends as well. Obviously we want people playing this game. We want actual play podcasters yes. and streamers and, folks just really getting excited and involved. So we are absolutely making tools to make that process easier. Wonderful. And once more for the folks at home, we are taking questions in chat. I'm keeping track of those. I do see that a couple are coming through already. So we will be getting to those at the uh, very end of all of the questions here. And so keep them coming, please, so that we can uh, answer your burning questions or as much as we're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what is what is the next phase of Cobalt Press? You guys are moving from third party to to first party content creation. And so uh, what what is that going to look like? What can uh, independent third party publishers expect from Cobalt Press and Black Flag moving forward? Um, it's a huge change for us, but a welcome change. And it's sort of time we've been um, We've been doing this a long time with a lot of success and the audience just keeps growing. And I, you know, I, frankly, uh, we are ready to support a, a wider community, right? That's what the core fantasy role-playing system's about. Um, we have, as Celeste was saying, partners who are going to be publishing adventures, supplements, uh, source books of all kinds to support it. Um, I think some of those Kickstarters are in the planning stages, some of those things are streams, some of them are digital tools from all the largest platforms out there, and um, honestly, they're they're ready to move, um, and we're still sitting here saying, we got to play test and be 100% sure <laughs> on everything first, right? So there's a little bit of a push me, pull you going on about when is it ready? When is it baked? And we feel we're still in that early stage. But what we're making clear to partners is there is every opportunity to step on board, right? This is uh, an open gaming project. So the rules are open content. Um, 
that means anybody can have at it and publish for the system uh, wherever they like. And that's kind of a huge opportunity um, for people who maybe are, are looking for um, a new system with some new advantages uh, to play with. Celeste, what do you see as the future? Yeah, well, I, I think the future is exciting and very bright. And I love that from the beginning, we were thinking about this project and how can we, how can we get 5e into the hands of people we love? and that love it as much as we do, right? That That's always been at the heart of this project. So we're seeing that trace through in, in all aspects of this um, because the 5e rules are, are going to go away. Um, they're gonna go away and a lot of people are gonna be left out in the cold and we don't want them to be there. Uh, we, we want them to have a nice warm hearth uh, to go to. So that's our hope. And a, and a cozy <laughs> player's guide. And a, a cozy snuggly guide. monster vault. Snuggle yes. monster. <laughs> very snuggly, You know, very uh, we can all sit around uh, <laughs> drinking cocoa, rolling dice together. No one has to be out in the snow. Uh, that's the dream. <laughs> it is. Keeping 5e uh, welcoming uh, and present uh, for everybody who's been playing it for years and wants to continue with that tradition, right? Wonderful. And uh, we do have some questions from chat, so uh, I will get into those. And folks in chat, if you have any questions about Project Black Flag, uh, please put those in the chat and we can uh, discuss whatever we're allowed to discuss uh, here on stream. And so I do have a question. It's from Marshy266 in chat. Uh, in the FAQ timeline, there is no mention of a lot of classes. Is the range Ranger going to get a play test and have you uh, do you have any idea about timing of additional classes coming out in the future well we are certainly play testing all the classes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> absolutely it would be redonkulous not to um, <laughs> in terms of exact timeline for when we're rolling out the base classes uh, keep your eye on the FAQ page uh, as more and more announcements come out about what is specifically going in each packet uh, I can say the Ranger is not in the next batch but uh, but soon keep your but eyes soon. on those announcements yes yes there's been a lot of Rangery talk mm -hmm. and I I I also can't say exactly when, but really we've been putting out a meaty batch of material every month and we, we aim to continue that pace and or speed it up. Um, so yes, uh, the Ranger is in the game. Of and course the Ranger. So is, so <laughs> we can't is every kick other out base Aragorn. Class. What? <laughs> right? I think every other base class and then then I'm going to be quiet about everything else. Okay, so, then this... uh, there's things. <laughs> hey, we did two new base classes in Deep Magic 2 for 5th edition, right? We sure like did. We got the Witch and the Theord, so it's not beyond us to think about it. <laughs> this is great. Uh, I love <laughs> we just wanted to show up and tease everyone. Uh, <laughs> <this whole panel. laughs> it's a fact. Um, we had two base classes in Deep Magic 2. Yeah. I'm just stating facts here. I'm just answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and we do have a question. This is a bit of a funny one from Chad. This is from uh, Eric Frankhouse Presents. Uh, question, Swole Bold as a playable lineage or heritage? Looking, look, I'm asking for the people. We, <laughs> so we do you want to know heard, about the Swole Bold? <laughs> we heard you all. You want a Cobalt lineage. You want it so bad. That was yeah. one part of a question we had on our playtest uh, packet one feedback, which is basically like, what classes do you most want to see? Cobalt by far and away was at the top of the list. So we like, are. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was well, a second on the list. Um, people want people want the Cobalt. So heck yeah, um, you you can. See see some cobalt uh, stuff coming uh, coming from us for it sure. It boggles me though like from the beginning <laughs> from like 1974 like from Gary's cobalt on they've been scrawny underpowered underdog small but fierce sure but like part of me wants to play the underdog so bad and part of yeah. me is like how are you going to put that up against some beefy dwarf who could 
squash you flat with a belch, right? Gonna like do it. Just... It is the time of the cobalt. It is the it time is. of the cobalt. It is the time of the cobalt. Absolutely. <laughs> kind of want the cobalt character to be like a group of four or five cobalts because one one cobalt's gonna one isn't enough. Isn't we need enough. more. So need... maybe maybe there will be a swobald variant. Yes. We'll see. <laughs> Oh, uh, you heard it here first, folks. Maybe. I'm going to start lifting. That's what yeah. Do. We all got to get swole. Uh, this project is making us swole if it's it doing is. anything. Uh. <laughs> yes. Excellent idea. We'll start pumping iron. Yeah. Awesome. So while more <laughs> questions are rolling in chat, uh, I have a couple of fun ones I thought of while we were chatting here. Uh what what would you say and I'll, I'll, this is for both of you what would you say is your favorite part so far of building project black flag what have you enjoyed the most you can be as vague as you need to <laughs> <laughs> i mean for me obviously getting to design something from the ground up uh and really looking at some of the fundamental things that I've just had to accept, right, over the last years as a third party creator, right? You have your base, the SRD, and that's all you can work with. That's the playground you're given. No questions. Do that. Uh, for the past, you know, five, six years, 5e has been out. So obviously me here, I get to look at that thing, that playground that I've been forced to play in for so long and be like, does it really need this swing set? Or perhaps we can add this, uh, you know, this cool bench over here. It's, uh, it's very exciting, um, really, really exciting and challenging work to look at those fundamentals and get to build new stuff. So every day is a new huge challenge and hugely exciting uh, going to bat for, for some of those things that we haven't been able to change for so long. Right. Uh, I feel the same way about the monster toy box, which has always been my favorite toy box, but I've never spent a lot of time thinking about the core monsters, right? Like, sure, they're useful, but they're sort of a rock that we've worked with for a long time. So similar to what you're saying, Celeste, it's like, well, what if we put a fresh set of eyes on it? Is there anything we'd want to be different about, I don't know, elementals or aberrations or the Fae? And then I think to myself, what if I just took, <laughs> oh, I don't know, the 1,600 monsters we've published in Tome of Beasts over the last seven, eight years, and just ripped ourselves off for the very best bits of those books and put them in here. Like just distilled the best, crunchiest, most playable, most entertaining swobald like elements and, and fit some of that into a monster ball. So frankly, I think the most fun for me has been cherry picking some of our own best moves from honestly a really deep back catalog of monsters right let's just toot our own horn for a minute like right. it's a blast to go back to some of this oh this is so good we'll do this note again yeah. so i also love yeah i mean on the player side too it's great like we have done so much cool work in books like tome of heroes especially our recent releases tome of heroes uh which is just a huge catalog yes. of, of player options that i am absolutely looking through and and seeing like what did we get right in these like what did we really get right and what do we need we need this as a core fundamental value so tome of heroes and like our book of blades series that's been focused on on yes. martial characters uh, a lot of inspiration and fun ideas are coming up in in these conversations so looking at those and and making sure like wolfgang said we you are getting the best of the best uh in in the foundation is is hugely exciting wonderful and we have another one from chat uh what have you been inspired by while developing yeah. black flag I mean, for me, uh, in indie <laughs> RPGs, uh, a lot of it. I think the RPG model is is changing uh, as the community yeah. grows and more and more people get involved in the space. We're seeing so many different types of innovations come up in in games, and creators across the globe are doing great stuff, playing with old mechanics, making them feel new, or introducing wildly different things. Even the way books look, the way they feel, uh, the way the mm -hmm. digital experience is. So the more of these these unique perspectives I can get, 
uh, just the more, you know, it's firing these cool inspiration things like how can we take this element of this system I loved and read this weekend and then how can we incorporate this you know so so really drawing from from a huge collection um of those awesome all those awesome booths you see at cons you know and you're yes. like what is this I've never heard of you before and you look and you're like this game is amazing why don't more people know about this right I mean I've been inspired by by what I see in competing products of course some of it's mind-blowingly great we live in a golden age of tabletop honestly right so why wouldn't we look around and say who's doing weird and interesting and wonderful things um but i've also been inspired by going back to some of the the core stuff i mean maybe it's because some of the monster roster is very familiar but in part i've gone back to uh you know old myths and legends and how does this monster fit in uh, to the history of games and is it important and can we do anything new with it? Um, occasionally weird, quirky, moss-encrusted folklore has been inspiring. I love the weird corners of the hobby where people are doing strange stuff. I mean, it's everyone from like the old school renaissance, the OSE people, Frog God, um, troll lord castles and crusades all the way up to the exactly what celeste is talking about um the people who are really pushing hard on let's make it look fresh let's make it let's reinvent the rules so we're trying to find that happy middle ground between um familiar and familiar yes and so you don't have to new. feel right like you're relearning the wheel the wheel Goodness, is great no. we love the wheel we don't want the shape everyone to loves change. the wheel the wheel is awesome but i bet we can build a better wheel you know that's the, that's <laughs> yeah. the uh that's the thought maybe it doesn't have to be wood we could put some rubber on that bad boy and make it really it still spin. needs to be round celeste it's it still be needs round. to be round <laughs> yes i mean we do look around at what's going on in the industry and often it's super inspiring and yeah. to some degree we've also been looking around at other cool art yeah. often when i feel stuck on something it's a matter of visually what's exciting about this or why is this boring i looked at a monster collection recently i'm like the text is really good but the art is not getting me excited hmm maybe i need to go back and hone some art briefs again a little more carefully right because yeah. it's both it's it's a lush playful imaginative fantasy art cornucopia but it's also crunchy mechanics um that gotta work so yeah i would say in general too i really like looking towards video games um as inspiration uh, yeah. because Video games well, are so tabletop off for years. It's our right. Turn to rip so now off we're doing it games. back. You know, so <laughs> it, it, like I love when I play a new game and I, I'm going through it. I'm like, oh my god, this combat feels so good. Why does this feel so good? Can we replicate this experience in a pen and paper TTRPG? Right. Uh, that's always a really challenging and fun thing to do. Uh, so I do want to apologize in advance. I'm playing through Bloodborne, which is a Souls game, everyone. So and it's yeah. brutal. So if there's something uh, you see in a Black Flag playtest that feels extremely mean, instant that's death probably for why. everyone. Instant death. Oh my God! You just grew a snake head. Uh, game over. Um, that <laughs> that sort of nonsense. So this is what sorry. editors are for. <laughs> Celeste, are you okay? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, no, no. This is fine. <laughs> But yeah, video game inspiration. I'll take it. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we do have a we do have another question from chat. This is a question from uh, the Cobalt chat on the twenty first. What is mm -hmm. organized play going to look like for Project Black Flag? Oh, what a good question. Um, it's going to exist. It's going to sort of kick off at Gen Con, right? You'll see what that's like. But we also have organized play under the Cobalt Chronicles banner uh, coming back this spring uh, as as 5e, first of all. And it's it's that organized play, the Cobalt Chronicles organized play, is online through Start Playing Games. Um, and it's, I believe, the last Sunday of the month. Um, so if you can't get down to your local shop or if you can't get all the way over to Gen Con, um, you can find a table there. 
Um, so that's part of it. Uh, the other half of it, um, I think, is a bit further out. Like, we're pretty focused on what the playtest gameplay is going to be at Gen Con. Um, but yes, uh, it's under discussion, I guess, is all I can say at this point. And uh, I think we have a clever plan, <laughs> but we need to sharpen it some more. It's not ready yet. Well, you heard it here, folks. It is it is in the works. It is coming. We just have to be a little more patient and wait for more information on that. Uh, and while we wait for a couple more questions from chat, I know we're running up on time. We've only got uh, about five more minutes, so get those questions in chat if you have any burning questions uh, for our lovely folks from Cobalt Press here today, Celeste and Wolfgang. Uh, I, I do want to point out the fact that people are talking about Swolbolds in chat um, very excitedly. Uh, so, you know, we'll just, just put it's it out there. Become for, our mascot, I have to speak for the people like, as well. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We had Swolbold pins at PAX Unplugged, and I feel like we had many oh people goodness. just coming to get the Swolbold pin because they needed it. <laughs> Like, we've already got all your game stuff, but we need the pin. But listen, we the need pin. the pin. Like, <laughs> no BS. We need that pin right now. <laughs> Swolbolds and snowbolds for life. Oh, my god! Oh, snowbolds. Okay. Wow. okay, that we need to branch out. We're getting, yes. You guys are going to have to start taking notes. Uh, watch, the, uh, watch the VOD back and take notes of what people in chat are saying, I guess. <laughs> yes. um, I mean, yes, that's exactly right. When the community feeds us something awesome or... or resonates with something that gets put forward in an actual play we we really try to pay attention and say dear designers everybody loved this thing do more of this thing <laughs> um because yeah of course we want to celebrate the most fun stuff and the pumped up swobold is <laughs> is one of them although there are other monsters so have you, there are <laughs> Dragons are extremely pumped up. Oh, boy dragons and all that you know uh, horrible yeah. jazz so <laughs> Yes, um, I think people are going to be surprised at some of the way the the lineages work um, and some of the lineages that we're going to put in future playtest here. Um, I mean, the existing ones are awesome and stick pretty well with the tradition, but doing something like a cobalt player character race to just be serious about it for a minute is is a change, right? Like usually they're comic relief at best and low level foes, but you know, they're sort of our icon, our mascot, our favorite. And it doesn't surprise me a bit that people are like, I would play that. There was a an organized play adventure from Cobalt Press years and years ago, which was a pretty straightforward urban scenario, except that every single pre-gen character, I, I wrote this one, uh, was a Cobalt <laughs> character. <laughs> So I would hand them out at the table and I'd say, who wants the cleric? And I would pass them the cleric. And I'd say, who wants the rogue? And I'd pass them the rogue. And by the time I passed out the third, who wants the fighter? Who wants the wizard? Like by the time I got to character number three, somebody would say, well, my guy's a kobold. What'd you get? And I'd say, well, I got a kobold. Are we all kobolds? <laughs> yes, you are. Secret marketing. <laughs> right? It was... And it wasn't even thought through that much, but everyone had fun playing rather silly characters. And I I feel comic relief has a long tradition in tabletop, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I think there's a place for that. And, and we're maybe we'll see a table full of cobalt pregens at Gen Con. Oops, Stay all cobalts. I want that at my table. That sounds like a blast. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of was. Uh, uh, we do have one last question from chat and then we will be up on time uh, this is also from Kobold chat Eric Frankhaus is in chat throwing all these great questions at us uh, from Kobold chat on the 8th of March so a couple weeks ago uh, do you have a favorite new talent that we have not seen yet Ooh. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting ones um, so far we have a ton of Marshall theme talents in the works. Uh, this is something I mentioned in uh, the latest design diary after packet two, but uh, we are planning a lot of awesome Marshall focused talents. Obviously 
the fighter has a long history of relying on feats to make them feel really cool and really unique. And that is something that we are absolutely not discarding uh, for Black Flag. We are probably going to have, I mean, I imagine the martial talent will be at least twice the size of the magic talents uh, in general. And you can absolutely expect to see our versions of some of those, those big hit talents. Uh, so taking things like you know, oh man, I gotta get my reaction with my pole arm, and I gotta have my shield in here. You, you can expect lots of really fun martial talents uh, coming from us soon. Uh, currently in the yes. pipeline. Yes, I'm excited about them. Mm. And Book of Blades, of course, also shows off some of our design thinking around martial classes. Okay. So, um, the timing on that series has been pretty good because it's expanding. Uh, each one of those installments is an expansion of the fifth edition, a fifth edition martial class. And I don't know, what have we done? Five or six of them so far? Yeah, I think I think five just went out. So six is uh six is coming soon. So. Yeah. Oh, very, very exciting. Well, thank you so much, uh, chat, for all your questions. Thank you, Celeste and Wolfgang, for your time today. Uh, thank you for having and, us. Uh, yeah, this has been great. Is there anything else, any last words you want to say to the folks at home before we sign off here? Uh, thank you for your support. Please go sign up for the playtest and yes. fill out the playtest form by Monday, because really, we do read them. And it is going to influence the design work, the direction, um, the points we hit and the stuff we leave out. So uh, yeah, make your voice heard. Yeah, yeah, and once again, uh, so go uh, the best place to find out more to get all the links, playtest packets, signups, everything is again, uh, Cobalt Press, the FAQ landing page. That's cobaltpress.com slash project black flag. Uh, go there and, and find out more, find out ways to get involved. We would love to have you, your sword uh, in this effort. Wonderful. Thank you so much again for your time. And thank you to everybody at home. Goodbye, Twitch. Bye, Twitch. Bye, Bye thank Twitch. you.